Hello, welcome back. As always, thank you for tuning in. Let's talk about immortality today, shall we? But what else? <laughs> what we're going to discuss over the next few minutes is something that I hope gives you joy and comfort and inspires you to practice. That's what I always hope for in offering one of these discussions. So, of course, it may be that what we talk about here doesn't bring hope or comfort as much as it does a sense of questioning. That's also a very beautiful thing. Let me simply state that we're invited here as we study and practice this course to question everything. And if you're questioning everything, that's good. That's good. That's what we should be doing. Now, let's not stop at questioning the veracity of what appears to come from this pixelated image on your screen. Let's, if we are questioning the truth and veracity of the teacher, okay, no problem. No problem at all. If you're questioning the truth and veracity of A Course in Miracles for any number of reasons, that is also not a problem at all. What I want to invite you to do is to keep going with that questioning. Far too often here in the world, we stop at questioning somebody. We stop at questioning a group that they may belong to, like a political party. We stop at questioning the truth of someone that's teaching. Something like A Course in Miracles. We stop short, far short, of what we really should be questioning. So it's worth our repeating over and over again, as many times as it in fact comes up in these videos, to keep going with that skepticism. If you've got it, great. Put it to good use. Keep going and question the very foundations of everything you now believe. Don't stop until you've done that and you keep questioning it. I'm talking about the fundamental underpinnings of our thought system, of our world view and world. I'm talking about questioning the world itself. Questioning the basic assumption that we're individual human beings, but we are not. It may appear that way. It appears that we're on this spinning ball of rock, wobbling on its axis and rotating around a nuclear reaction that we refer to as a star, which we've decided is 93 million miles away. So in other words, close enough to warm us during the day and far enough away so that we don't burn up and incinerate we appear to find ourselves here. Where's here? Keep questioning because you have heard, and if you've never tuned in before, well, welcome. You're about to hear the central teaching of A Course in Miracles. There is no world. This is not you, and you know this is not you, or you would not be interested in spirituality at all. You would never have 
listened to the voice of your inner teacher that continually speaks to you saying there's more to it than this there's more to it than just meeting this thing's needs of food of eating the next meal of going to the bathroom and sleeping there's more to it than that there's more to it than your job there's more to it than your social status you know this of course we all do we all do we're not a body we're not individuals there is no individuality why there is no separation of any kind we are not separate from our brother so when you hear people talking about oneness one love it is not a pipe dream it's fact fact There is not now, there has never been any separation of any kind ever, 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 ever. We're not separate from our brother. We're not separate from God. That's impossible. Deep down, we all know this, and you may be entertaining this for the first time ever in this lifetime, or for the first time in a while, perhaps things will be said here that serve as a confirmation for what you've always known. Exactly. And if it raises questions, excellent. Keep questioning. We're talking about immortality here. Now, we're not a body. This is not immortal. This thing has changed remarkably in the 52 years that it's been running around this spinning ball of rock. It used to have more hair, for starters. This patch of, of hair that's now mostly white was quite jet black at one point in time. My point in saying all of this obviousness is that the physical body changes constantly. The world changes constantly. And after all, we're not a body. We're not a body. And this spinning ball of rock is not our home. Let that sink in. If you've let it sink in before, repetition is good. Repetition is very good. Let it sink in again. Because today simply might be the day where a light flicks on. You don't know this, which is why we continue to show up every day and extend love. Forgive the Son of God. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Because we don't know when the day, the moment is going to come where this light flicks on and you get it. Maybe that's happening right now. And things are never the same. If, if you've had these experiences, you will clearly know that things are not the same after at all. And that's a beautiful thing. We are, in fact, immortal. Now, something that is so obvious that we typically miss it here in the world, which pretty much goes for every teaching of this course, it's very simple. It's so simple that we're apt to think this can't possibly be correct. What? I mean... As we say in our modern instant messaging language, the WTAF, if you don't know what that is, look it up, or get your kids or grandkids to tell you. <laughs> we think that a lot when we encounter this material, because, I mean, it's so simple. 
this is so simple. We think, yeah, it's got to be more complicated than that. That can't possibly be. No way. Oh, yes. Way. It is that simple. There is no death. The Son of God is free. Why is this? The Son of God has never left his source. Capital S. Mm. Ideas leave not their source. This is a very oft-quoted passage from A Course in Miracles. What this means is that thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker, despite our efforts here in the world to dissociate them, to project them and put them off on someone else, which we do every time we attack, every time we blame, every time we think something deeply unconstructive and negative about our brother. And we have multiple occurrences of this every day when you really think about it. When we do this, we're projecting our own sense of guilt. So part of the message today is that you're guiltless. Guilt is something that you could simply set aside. There is, in fact, nothing to be guilty of. Why? Ideas leave not their source. You haven't left God. If you never did believe the myth about the Garden of Eden, fantastic, no problem. Yeah, it's not possible for us to leave our source. Ideas leave not their source. Something very important here in A Course in Miracles is that we're known as the thought of God. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Where are you? Exactly. In the mind of God, in God, that's where. So in thinking about immortality, and I mean immortality, this is finite. This craps out and dies. Of course it does. It's not real. It's never been, and we've never, in fact, entered it. Ever. Once you begin to have that experience, if you have, then it's not possible to go back to thinking that this 80% water thing is your home that it envelops and encases you and traps you inside its walls. I mean, even what appears to be a solid outer wall is in fact a semi-permeable membrane. It's not who we are. God is eternal. Eternity is constant. It's eternal. It's always. And always is now. Here in the world we believe in, and we've put our faith in, time as a as this enigma, as this thing that we don't really understand, and we have decided that it proceeds in this linear fashion from one moment to the next, in these measurable, divisible little increments, marching inexorably to the end. What end? Eternal is now. It's constant. Really, what end? Eternity always, always doesn't end. Think about it, right? That's what we're invited to do. Always does not end. It can't end. So along the way, we hear ideas such as 
time is a complete illusion. There is no journey, in fact, though we call the spiritual path a journey or a walk. Sure, that's useful for us here as we awaken. It's useful for learning purposes to conceive of our spirituality as growth, as progress, as a path, something like that. But we've never gone anywhere. There's no place to go. We're simply awakening. We're waking up. And as we've slept, as we're sleeping, we're safe in God where we've always been. To conceive of what we call enlightenment, realization, going home, final realization, setting the ego aside forever, because there is no ego, all of that, whatever we may call this experience, it's quite helpful to think about it as awakening, which is also called awakening, because that's what's going on. Again, we're immortal, because we've never left our source. Always is now. It has no end. nor beginning, in fact, it simply is. Perhaps the simplest statement uttered in A Course in Miracles is only two words, and in fact, each word is one syllable. God is. Eternal, always, constant, outside of all of our conventions of language, time, space, planets, solar systems, and galaxies, all of that. God is. What you also may find helpful is what this two-word statement implies. Only God is. Anything that changes, anything that's not eternal, for example, is illusion. In other words, it's not real. It's a dream. You are forever guiltless. You have never sinned. There's no such thing as sin. Perfect oneness, i.e. God, love, has no ego to be offended. There's never been any separation of any kind. So how can there be any offense or transgression? It's impossible. It is not possible. to transgress or to sin against, to harm or wrong, involves at least two parties. One doing the supposed harm, the other the victim or recipient of said harm. There's no dualistic split. There is only perfect oneness. There's no sin. You're not a sinner. If you've been raised to think you're a sinner, perhaps this comforts you or serves as clarification. Now, does it serve as a provocation? Yeah, maybe. You'll hear it again. If you stick around this series of videos, you will most certainly hear it again from me. You are not a sinner. If you're longing to let go of that label of yourself, you are not a sinner. You've never sinned. There is no such thing as sin. You're not a sinner. You are guiltless. You're not guilty of eating an apple. I mean, what if you like apples? You're not guilty. You've never offended God. It's impossible. 
you're completely guiltless and invulnerable, immortal. Remember, you're not a body. Spirit doesn't die. Love doesn't die. It's outside of time completely. There's no end. Now, as I talk about ideas like this, I mean, as we go through these ideas that A Course in Miracles presents to us and is very steadfast and uncompromising and at adamant, very adamant about, you are not a sinner. Perhaps this again serves as a confirmation and may come as a joyful relief to you. It may well. Now, if it doesn't, that's all right. Remember, question everything, but question the very foundations of everything you now believe. And what is more likely to be true? That God, love, punishes and separates and condemns and favors one person over another because they attend a certain building at 11 o'clock on Sunday and the other people attend it on Friday. For example, hmm? is that more likely or is it more likely that love extends itself and there is no separation of any kind and that God is love? In other words, wholly, eternally loving. The practical situation here is we can deny anything we want to deny. Your power of decision has never been taken from you. I'm certainly not going to take it from you. Jesus isn't taking it from you. The Holy Spirit's not taking it from you. It is yours to exercise as you will. Choosing not to decide is a choice still, yes? Our power of decision is, in fact, the one power that remains to us here in our imaginary imprisonment, supposedly inside one of these, inside one of these. Yeah, if that doesn't resonate with you, then there's a reason why. We're not a body. We're not a body. And you have never sinned. There is no sin. There is no sin. There is no sin. Hmm. We said that a lot today. So someone, perhaps you need to hear this. So let it permeate your mind. All right. Mm -hmm. Questions are always very good. What is spirituality but deep self-inquiry anyway? I mean, we're invited, after all, to question the very foundations of everything, every single thing that we now believe. And not to stop until we do it repeatedly and arrive at the conclusion that, yeah, I am one with God. Of course you are. Along the way, questions are always welcome, and they're welcome right here. So if you have them, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have had a number of, of excellent questions asked right here in the discussion and comment thread on YouTube. And it's a very good forum for that. It's perfect for that, in fact. So 
ask them if you've got them. And if you have not yet subscribed, I'd love to have you join us. This is the prompt here in the corner of your screen. So when you click that, you'll be invited to join us. Please do go ahead and subscribe. A number of videos appear each week for the sake, the sheer sake of consistency. First of all, we're going through the text of A Course in Miracles here on this series of videos, and you'll notice that that's over 600 written pages long. There are 31 chapters, and we're on chapter 13, which means many more repetitions of ideas such as, you are not a sinner, there is no sin, there is no death, the Son of God is free. Hmm, free. There is no death, immortal. Things like that. All right. So if you have questions, again, please feel welcome to leave them. And if you have subscribed, thank you for starters. And if you would like to be notified of each time that a new video drops in this series, that bell icon on YouTube, controls your notifications. You can click that and a pull down menu will arise and you'll be able to select whether you'd like to be notified each time a new video comes out here. So that is an option. If you feel like you're missing these for whatever reason, you could choose to be notified of them. And I thank you for tuning in here and especially for your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice and for listening, just listening. It's really important. All right, thank you. I will talk to all of you very soon.